So, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. It is Tuesday, the 12th uh, of June. Time is flying ever so fast. Today, I want to talk about a, a small lesson uh, that I've learned from Seth Godin in one of his books, which I'm sure many of you have read already, Tribes. Uh, we Need You to Lead Us, a great book. Uh, it's a little book. It's a quick read. And I want to just highlight uh, a couple of points that he shares here uh, and then share a couple of things that we can do to apply it for ourselves as we build our Niken business. Um, he shares a quote. He, he said he found this blog online that was all about finding all of the best restaurants within a 16-block square of Seattle. That was what this blog was all about. And so they would go into forensic detail about the length of the chopsticks, the, uh, the size of the, um, the fortune cookies. A lot of the food was Asian food that they liked uh, to eat. And, um, and, and he came across one of, these, uh, one of these blogs. And I'm going to read out a quote that he shares uh, from this blog. And then his response. His response, I think, is very profound. Uh, so here's the quote uh, from this blogger about uh, a particular restaurant that they found in Seattle. I was looking forward to this place because some Amazon buddies rated it quite highly. It's a small place requiring us to eat in the neighboring food court, brackets, which is awesome because I like hanging out with crack addicts, <laughs> close, <laughs> close brackets. As is typical, I ordered typical fare, menu item number one, the tonkatsu. It advertised that it contained slice of pork, which just wasn't going to work for me. I opted for extra pork. This ramen is like a bowl of fatty pork and butter with some noodles for added texture. I admired their bravery in serving this to me. It should have come with a carton of Newports, but clearly my health is not their concern. The broth, though flavorsome, is overwhelmed with the fatness of the pork. However, the pork is fantastic, delicious, and cooked to the point where it falls apart. He said, I don't know about you. This is now Seth Godin talking. He said, I don't know about you, but I want in. I want to eat at every one of these restaurants. I want to post my reviews. I want to join the tribe. If they ask me to pitch in, I will. I'm in. Now, this was the point that, it, that, that really struck me. And I want to emphasize this because it gets to the heart of a very typical message that is often incorrect in that we're marketing. He says this, others will scoff and move on, wondering what the obsession is all about. That's what makes it a tribe, of course. There are insiders and there are outsiders. Now, let me just read that last statement again. Others will scoff and move on. Wondering what all the obsession is about. That's what makes it a tribe. There are insiders and there are outsiders. Now, here's my point on this. My point is, we all love Niken. We all love the products that Niken promotes. We all love the cause and philosophy. And we believe overwhelmingly that it's for everyone. But some people will scoff and move on. This is not for everyone. This is not for all. That's what makes it a tribe. There are insiders and there are outsiders. And we here on this call are the insiders. Now, let me share this follow-up point uh, that he identifies. Most people don't matter so much. Now, that's a frightening thought when we talk about humans being more. Wait a second. How does that fit with our message? Let me reiterate what he says here. Most people like the products they already have. So marketers ignore them. Most people work hard to fit in so others don't notice them. Most people like eating at places that they've eaten before. Most people think this book is a bad idea. Most people would like the world to say just as it is, but karma. Most people are afraid. Most people didn't use Google until last year. Most people aren't curious. You're not most people. You're not the target market for most marketers and you're certainly not a manager. Not only aren't leaders most people, but the members of the most important tribes aren't most people either. Let me read that point again. 
you are not only aren't leaders, most people, because this is who he's talking to here, we as leaders, not only aren't leaders, most people, but the members of the most important tribes aren't most people either. Uh, I want you to know that we're not most people. And who we're looking for in Nikan is not most people. We have a tribe, something that makes us unique, something that people will scoff at and move on, and other people will become obsessed about. So the critical thing is, what is it that we can do to find those that fit into our tribe? Those that aren't the most people in the world, those that will stand out and be a little different, those that will want what we want, have what we have, and want to be like we are. I want to share a picture on screen while I share an interesting story. I want to share with you uh, five ways that we can connect with and resonate with potential people of our tribe. Because what I really liked about that example that he gave from the, the food blog is that it's not about attracting all people. And so often in network marketing, we say this is for everyone, don't we? This is for everyone. Anyone can do this. Everyone will benefit. It's for all people. This will make the whole world better. But if we try to appeal to everyone, we connect with no one. Yes, yeah, so it's very, very important that we identify what makes us unique. Be comfortable with those that want to scoff and move on because they have their place, they have their tribe, and that tribe isn't necessarily with us. And that's okay. Because like I said before, there are insiders, there are outsiders. And we're looking for those that want to be on the inside of our tribe. So I'm going to share a picture. And, uh, and then I'll tell you the story that goes with this picture. Okay. Can you see the picture of the beach? Yeah. Okay, excellent. So uh, here's the interesting story about this, uh, this beach, this situation here. So not that long ago, there was a, a family by the name of uh, the Ursi family. They saw, the mother saw two of their sons screaming for help out in this beach. This is literally a photograph taken from this event. They were about 100 yards out into the ocean and they'd become caught uh, in a strong current and they were getting carried out to sea. There was a nearby couple that tried to rescue the boys, but as they tried to rescue them, they got caught in the current as well. So members of the Ursi family dove in to try and rescue the struggling swimmers. And what happened? They got caught too. Next thing you know, there are nine struggling swimmers getting pulled out to sea, caught in the current. There were no ropes. There was no lifeguard. The police sent for a rescue boat. But the people had been out in the ocean now struggling for 20 minutes. They were exhausted. Their heads were bobbing into the water. And people they were on the shore, were starting to get worried. Now, there was a lady on the shore by the name of Jessica May Simmons, and her husband had the idea to form a human chain. This is what you see out there in the water. And they shouted at people on the beach to help them. Dozens of people started to link arms, and they marched into the ocean. And Jessica said to see people from all different races and genders come into action to help total strangers was something phenomenal to witness. She said an 80 person uh, strong chain stretched towards the swimmers. And this is the picture, like I said, that you see. Um, everyone on the beach could only think of traditional solutions. And they were paralyzed, they were stuck. But one couple in a split second decided to think differently. And as a result, they were able to find a way to fix the problem. I really like that. We're not always going to fit in, ladies and gentlemen. Um, but being different in positive ways can turn out for us to become a lifeline to others who may be struggling or may be looking for an opportunity. It's really important for us to recognize that learning to be different or to think different is not, is, is not a problem, not a challenge, but an opportunity and can be a lifeline for others. Now, the other point that I want to emphasize in this picture is the need to be distinct. Uh, I, I want to talk, I'll, I'll, I'll click the this, this screen sharing off for just a second. Um, what, what I want to emphasize is 
like I said, these five different ways. One of them there is learning to be different. In order to attract people into our tribe, we need to be willing to think and be and act differently. Not in a quirky way, <laughs> in a way that makes people step back and take a sideways look, but in a positive way where we stand up for our convictions, we stand up for what we believe in, and we're willing to maybe even stand alone um, as, we, as we champion what we believe to be so important here in NECAM. In doing that, we will learn to attract others that have similar convictions. So there are other ways. The first way that I want to stress um, after that, I guess point number two, is to be a product of the product. That's one of the ways that we can be different to be a product of the product. Our mission is for every home to be a wellness home, and that will always begin with ours, without a doubt. Anyone that is joining our business, the first thing that we want to encourage them to do is to establish their own wellness home. Uh, one thing that we can do to be a great example to those around us uh, for what we believe in and what we want to promote here in Niken in our business is to have our own wellness home have it established, have it ever growing, and be a product of the products. Be able to share with conviction our own personal testimonials on how the products have helped us. That, I think, is fundamental. And if anything, that really is step number one, isn't it? In order to create a compelling tribe that people want to belong to and be a part of, we need to be an example of what that represents. Because, of course, people want to be with like-minded people. We need to be that like-minded person for them. Uh, the second thing I think that we need to emphasize as well um, is to be articulate. I think each of us can do a better job of learning to articulate what we really value and believe here in Niken as important. We have our wellness previews. We have our business opportunity presentations. We have ABCs. We have countless opportunities to interact and talk with other people. Sometimes those opportunities catch us when we're least expecting it, uh, because they're not always planned or prepared for. Uh, one thing that I really love about Dave Johnson, if you don't mind me using my upline for just a minute, uh, is he's a great storyteller. Um, and he's got a wonderful way. I remember the first time I saw him, he's often talked about the first time he met me um, in Turkey. That was, of course, my first exposure to him. And he got up on stage with Valerie, his, his wonderful wife, and did what he does so wonderfully, and that was just to tell stories. And, um, and he came across in the most authentic, genuine uh, way that, that just made everything seem so simple and straightforward. He's just got that way of making it roll off the tongue and sound easy. Uh, but what, and, and I sat there listening going, wow, he just makes this sound so simple. It just seems so easy. Um, and I, and, I, and I, as I was listening, I thought, uh, yeah, I think I could do this. Yeah, if, if I was a guest sitting in here for the first time, I could get this done. It, it just made it come across that way. We've all heard it. We've all heard his wonderful stories and know what I'm talking about. But, but I want to emphasize this point. There is perhaps a secret to his mastery of that skill. Uh, and I hope Dave doesn't mind me sharing it. Uh, this is what it is. He's practiced that. He's taken time out to prepare and to fine tune his stories. Um, I've said this a number, I've, I've used this quote before, Oscar Wilde writing a letter to a dear friend. And in the letter he says, my apologies for the long letter. I didn't have time to write a short one. I love that. Uh, what I've found in creative writing um, is it's so easy to write a long letter. It's so much harder to write a short one. It's the, it's the, it's the rewriting that is the real skill. Um, and as we learn to tell our stories and learn to articulate them well, it's something that we must learn to practice, maybe even write down and rehearse so that we can get them fine-tuned and sounding eloquent and making it sound so simple. But that will require practice on our part. So I'd invite each of us to take some time out if we haven't done it yet to get a handful of stories that we can articulate well with eloquence. Um, that will roll off the tongue and sound comfortable and natural and make the business, the opportunity, the ideals, the values, the tribe sound compelling, sound worthwhile, 
and sound enticing and attractive. I think that's really important for each of us to learn to master that. Now, I talked about the third thing, of course, to be different. Uh, learning to think differently like that couple did where they formed the chain, um, again, teaches us a valuable lesson. One, it's often in being different where opportunities really present themselves. And it's being different in that situation became a great metaphor for us in learning that in doing so in a positive way, uh, we can be a lifeline to others that are desperately looking for something better. Um, and I think that's really important for us to highlight. Uh, again, the fourth thing is to learn to be distinct. Distinct means to be recognizably well-defined. I like that. What makes me or what makes you, what makes I, what, what makes us recognizably well-defined? So let's go back to this story uh, where Jessica Mae Simmons was on the beach and had this idea to form the human, the human chain. She also knew that she could help in an additional way. She said this, she said, I can hold my breath and go around an Olympic pool with ease. I knew how to get out of a rip current. I knew I could get to each swimmer, uh, get each swimmer to the human chain. Uh, she and her husband grabbed boogie boards and swam down the chain until they and another rescuer had helped reach the swimmers and get them, ferried them one by one back to the chain who then passed them to safety uh, back to the beach. She had a distinct skill. She knew how to swim against a rip current. And this is a really important thing. Each of us, as we join Niken, as we come to the table within our own tribe, we each have distinct skills. I can see Ruth Lowe's image here on the screen as we're talking. You, Ruth has some unique skills. Um, she's got a wonderful way, having an accountancy and finance background, of being able to explain the compensation plan in ways that makes it very digestible and easy for others to understand it and to get it well. Madeline is on the screen here, I'm seeing her face as well, has the most wonderful heart and loves everyone she comes in contact with. She's a nurse by profession. She spent her whole life caring for others and she does that with wonderful abundance. That is a distinct skill that Madeline has. Each of us, I could go around the room here and look at others that have unique skills uh, and abilities that make them something a force to be reckoned with in their own right. Uh, and what I would suggest is take some time out while you're going about your business, maybe when you're driving your car, when you're sat in a train, while you're having your breakfast, when it might be normally moments of solitude, and try to spend some time identifying what is my unique skill? What is my point of differentiation? We don't need to have every skill. We don't need to have every point that stands out in the crowd because we are a part of a tribe. That's the great thing. Uh, we all attract like-minded people into this business, but we all come in with unique talents. Um, and I think as we can identify our own uniqueness, our own point of differentiation, we can bring that to the table and stand out. Uh, and then when we're working with new people and we find people that have other talents that maybe don't connect with mine personally, we know someone that has the skill they're looking for and we can connect them to another member of the tribe. I love that. One of my favorite things to say when I get thrown tough questions and I've been thrown tough questions my entire life in network marketing. Um, I, I love to be able to say this. If someone asks me a question and I don't have the answer, that's a fantastic question. I don't know the answer to that. However, I know someone that does. Let me get back to you uh, with the answer. One of the great things that we can teach others in this business is that we don't have to have all the answers to all the questions. Yeah. One of the great things about this business is that we're a part of a tribe that has a collective shared pool of knowledge, of skills, of attributes that make the collective enriched and better because of it. Isn't that wonderful? So my message today is this. We're not after most people. We want to love everyone, but we're not after most people. We want to stand out, be different, be willing to be a, an example of what we believe in, identify our own uniqueness, 
learn to articulate our own story and message well so that we can find those that choose to opt in. Those that want to be insiders versus outsiders. We want to welcome those that say, this is fascinating. And we want to say all the very best to those that go, what's that all about? And they choose to move on because everyone has their own tribe that they want to belong to. Uh, We've found ours. And I think we are uniquely blessed to be in a position in life where we've found our tribe, where we've found our home, where we've found our place that we belong uh, and we feel good being here. Isn't that great? There are so many people that are still looking, that are desperate to belong, but they don't know where that home is. We want to find those that want Niken to be their home. And we do that by being us, letting our uniqueness show so that they can connect with us. Because we all know that people join us more than they join anything else. Yeah? They join us. So let the best of us shine. Introduce them to the best of us within the tribe and let them be a part of this wonderful opportunity called NECAM. Ladies and gentlemen, we've come to the end of the call. I hope this has been helpful and instructive because more than anything, um, some of the greatest things that we can do to build our business is to feel an affinity to the tribe. We do that through recruiting. When we stop doing that fundamental behavior, we are starting to disconnect ourselves from the new lifeblood of what should be an ever-growing tribe. Another way to connect to the tribe, apart from these webinars, is through the events, where we can be face-to-face with each other, shoulder-to-shoulder, heart-to-heart, give each other the Niken hugs that we all love. The best part of the job is getting to these events and getting all these Niken hugs, yeah? Um, Because that's where we really feel the love of each other um, in the team and feel a great sense of belonging. Network marketing and Niken isn't just about making a difference in people's lives by providing a financial opportunity. It's bigger than that. It's giving people a sense of belonging and a sense of purpose. And that's what Niken can do best when we connect people to that cause and to the people. Come along to the events. We've got an event coming up this weekend, the Power A call, the monthly call, which will take place this Saturday. We have the uh, next month. Orlando is around the corner. We're going to be talking so much about leadership development and how we can really help people connect in our tribe um, and be leaders of our own tribe in a way that we've never done before. So again, after that, we've got San Antonio and Texas, uh, more instruction, more opportunity to connect with the tribe. And then we've got Toronto um, in in October, sorry, and then um, San Antonio uh, in November. Great opportunities to connect be a part of the tribe, be heart to heart, shoulder to shoulder uh, with people that we love and care for. So let's make the most of this tribe that we're a part of. Let's make it count. Let's not squander one of the great privileges that is ours um, and take it for granted. So easy, isn't it? If we've been in this business for a while to take this part for granted. It's the most cherished part of the business. I'm always asked what my favorite product is in Nikan, and I always say, the people. It's the people. It's who we become as a result. It's not just who we are when we start. It's who we become as a consequence of our association with each other and as a result of what we do with what we've been given in NECAM. So let's take the time out this week to stand taller, reach out to more people, invite more people to connect with our tribe, uh, let the best of us shine and, uh, and make a difference and invite them to connect with other members of the tribe so that they can have a great experience too. Thank you all so much, ladies and gentlemen. Glad that you've been with us. Thank you for all these wonderful notes uh, coming through uh, on, on the chat. Really glad that you've enjoyed this. And uh, let's be sure to share it. And uh, take care, everyone. Have a great week. Thank you, Ben.